Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Tammy Tucks here. Let's go ahead and get into 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 5, Episode 6, Burns and Betrayals. If you are brand new to my channel, I do TV show breakdowns with commentary, thoughts, opinions, theories, predictions, all that kind of stuff. So if you enjoy that type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, thumbs up the video, hop to the comment section, all that stuff that YouTubers ask for right away <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it y'all know this show stresses me out i enjoyed the show but i swear 90 day fiance stresses me out y'all where are they finding these people but let's go ahead and um i'm gonna say off rip i'm not doing the man the new man that's with this the woman that he has not seen before that he has not video chatted with before i'm not talking about them i'm not getting involved in that foolishness because we're not doing them. We're going to do everybody else that appeared in this um, episode. So let's start with Caleb and Alina. So um, they wake up the next morning. You know, they had sex the night before. Um, he thinks that it was fun. Alina thinks that it wasn't exactly what she always imagined because there were some awkward points. Um, and she's talking that up to her being a little person and he probably just didn't know how to hold her in certain positions and all that type of stuff. So she just kind of feels like it was, you know, it was good, but just not what she imagined. And I'm like, there is no please in this heifer. Um, I told y'all I never saw it for her. Did y'all see recently that it has come out that she um, did like, I don't want to say blackface, but she was calling like she, it's not blackface, but she dressed herself up, makeup and everything to look like a black person. And then she put in the comment, like, all my niggas or something, but spell niggas with a Q. And, like, girl, we knew what she was saying. She took the post down. She's denying it was ever her. She said it was Photoshopped. I believe it. I believe it was her. I believe she did do it. She gives me such bad, she gives me bad energy, to be real. But nonetheless, um, he was telling her that, it was fun for him, but, you know, he, um, her size threw a monkey wrench in it for him. So, you know, different positions and things that he's used to doing, he had to kind of detail and work around. And he says in his, um, confessional that he just wasn't used to, like, the size difference. He didn't know if she wanted to be thrown around. He didn't know what he could exactly do, what he did, couldn't do. And he just kind of feels like they just have to keep practicing more and more to do it. So she tells him um, that it was enjoyable. And he was like, enjoyable? You know, he was offended, okay? So she was like, I don't want to tell you too many good things because I don't want you to stop trying so hard. Y'all, I do not like Elena. I'm not saying that Caleb is that much better. But when I tell y'all I do not like this lady, <laughs> I do not like her. She is, oh, she is so jarring to me. So they go get dressed and other stuff for the day. They're going to head to um, like this grand market and they're going to take Elijah with them because he is leaving in a couple of days and she really wants Elijah and Caleb to get together and to kind of fix their, their awkwardness and you know, like the little beef they have. So Elena could not wait to tell Elijah that, that she has sex. Could not wait, y'all. It was like she just kept throwing out the hints. We didn't sleep last night. We didn't do y'all sleeping. Like, I was like, girl, act like you done got you some before. So, but while they're sitting down talking, Caleb goes to walk down um, a different, like, walkway or a different, like, path in the, in the market. They grab some tea, and they go to have a seat. And she is saying that she, because they have already, now, because they've now consummated their relationship, that she feels herself getting more attached to him and she wants him she wants to know if they're going to get more serious like where is this going because she like in elena's mind they were supposed to get together get in a relationship right away and then you know happily ever after and that is not going as fast as she had hoped so 
like she said, like, you know, when should I, you know, when are we going to get more serious? And Elijah was like, don't ask me, ask him. And I said, no, no, Elijah, don't have an attitude because you've been all up in their business this whole time. That's why she feels comfortable enough to ask you. But Elijah just kind of tells her, like, you need to, these are questions that you should ask. And then he was like, and if you're scared to do it, girl, I'll ask for you. And she was like, no, I should do it myself. And he was like, exactly. So do it. So basically this big secret is um, that when she first started talking to Caleb a little more seriously, she was still living with an ex. And I'm like, girl, if it's in the past, if it's back then, why do you care? Why is it such a big deal? I feel like y'all live on different sides of the world. I, to me, it wouldn't be a big deal. Is it something that you even have to tell him? Like, why are you even, why are you even for real, for real bringing it up? But, all right, so that's that's going to come out next week um, on the episode. So then we have Kim and Usman. <laughs> so Kim is like, what Usman shirt am I going to wear today? <laughs> she got a whole closet full of damn t-shirts. And then she wonder why they calling her super fan. Because every time y'all are, every time they see you, you got on a, a shirt with his damn face on it. That's why. So she said that she's a little, like she's a little bummed out that they haven't had a lot of time alone together. They haven't kissed. He has not stayed in her room. I said, girl, you should have waited to give him the gifts. You came out with the PS5 and the MacBook too early in the trip. You should have told him, come stay the night. I got something for you the next morning. And then pull out the gifts. But she sprayed all this body spray. And I was like, it's giving me Victoria's Secret <laughs> 2001. And she was spraying it, y'all. Just <laughs> spray so much that it was like seeping through her shirt. I said, oh, Kim. You too old to not have you a good, a good cologne perfume. Nonetheless, we go, um, we get to the video shoot. And the song is about Zara. Kim doesn't know. Zara is an ex-girlfriend of his. And she is like, what is Zara? I don't know what Zara means. He just told me it's about all the Zaras across the world. I said, Kim, you are not this dumb. But all right, girl. So... Usman said that he brought her specifically because he knows there's going to be beautiful models and dancers there, and he wants to see how she interacts with them. Is she going to be jealous? How she's going to be able to take his fans and groupies and, like, just different younger women that he, um, that he works with. So that was really kind of the reason, one of the bigger reasons that he brought her. So... His assistant and his um, manager are trash. Bod, what are they? Bod, Bodman and Slam T? Trash. So he's he's getting his hair cut and the power goes out. Or like the, 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 the socket stops working. And they were like, your hair looks fine. Kim said, no, it's not. It's not done. So they're like, they're just very unorganized. So the clothes that he's supposed to be wearing for the different scenes in the video shoot, Everything is still folded up. They're looking through all this luggage to try to pick stuff out. And Kim is like, this is ridiculous. Y'all need to have all this stuff together. Where's the stylist? Why isn't this stuff together? And I'm like, yeah, I agree with her. Like, y'all do all this talk about how y'all know what's best for him and y'all getting this stuff done and all this other stuff. But then we're at something as typical as a photo, as a video shoot and y'all don't even have his damn clothes together everything that he was gonna wear should have been in one suitcase we should have been able to pull out this is the first um the first outfit because it was just some shorts and some look like they look like some wedge sandals that he was wearing but whatever like that's this outfit we gonna do this outfit next like I feel like that's very typical stuff that should have all been picked out and planned before. So I was with Kim. Kim said, don't have me come in here and be a mama on y'all. <laughs> so they're getting mad at her. They're telling her that, you know, she ain't got no place to be doing this. They got it all together. You know, they don't even want her there anyway. So, you know. So Kim is watching how Usman is behaving with the model. And she was like... He doesn't touch me like that. Ugh. And I mean, you can tell she has a twinge of jealousy about her, but you can also tell on the flip side that she like, 
deep down, Kim knows this is not going to work. But she is holding on for, for good faith. And I'm rooting for you, Kim. For whatever reason, I am rooting for Kim. So she, after the video shoot, and it was like, what, five or six hours, she said that she can't help but think of Michael Jackson when she thinks of Usman. Because Michael Jackson was a perfectionist, as we all know. He is the GOAT, the greatest of all, the pinnacle of music. And she was like, and he's a perfectionist. You know, Usman is too. I said, girl, all right. So they're in the car, and Usman gets in and immediately lays on Kim's lap because he's about to go to sleep. And, you know, Kim is really there as his assistant, okay? And Kim turns around and apologizes to Bodman and Slam Tia said that she was out of line for how she acted in the room, but the shit was just not together. This was unorganized. And then she's like, he's very upset right now. And they was like, yeah, he mad at you. You the one that's causing everything. So they start going back and forth. Uzma wake up and say, God damn it, now listen. <laughs> I am mad, I was mad, and I'm mad at y'all because y'all didn't have the shit together. Usman also was like, look, I invited this lady here. Whether y'all like her or not, she's here. The way y'all are acting is ridiculous, and I feel like it's ridiculous too. Y'all know damn well that Usman is not about to be with this, with this woman. So if he wants to entertain her for two or three days, it's not getting in the way of y'all. It's not messing with y'all at all. If anything, he's just getting more publicity and he's actually getting onto american tv which is what y'all knew was gonna happen y'all are doing this for ratings stunts and shows so like i feel like it just ignore his ass y'all need to be worried about making sure the clothes is in order so and then he says in the end he's happy that he invited kim because she was there to help out and he realized that i said yeah you happy that she was there to get stuff in order for you because your team ain't doing what they need to be doing point blank Hamza in Memphis. Y'all know Hamza. I'm sorry. Y'all know Memphis works my nerve like none other. And it's really because, like, what are we doing, sis? I feel like Memphis should have went on Married at First Sight or maybe Love is Blind or something else. But, like, this is silly. Because if you want to go, you're basically marrying at first sight by you jumping up and going over to marry him, you know, like that anyways. But, all right. So, Memphis thinks that his mother is trying to get to know her and she's warming up to him, warming up to her a little bit. And I said, alrighty. So they're out at some restaurant or whatever and she randomly is like, I have to poop. Girl, just say you gotta use the bathroom. He can understand restroom, lavatory. Like, she, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of the stuff that she does is just kind of like, girl, I see why you can't find no man in America. What man wants to be with a woman that's basically like, I got to go dookie. I got to go poop. Who said? Strike one for the episode, Memphis. Um, no, so she's like, basically, it's really probably just her body not adjusting to the food that's over there. Um, you know, when you're out of, when you're out of the country, when you're eating different types of food, your body just does not always take to that food. So she's a little sick. So, Hamza tells her he wants to know her past before they get married. He wants to know about, like, her childhood and stuff. And uh, Memphis kind of looks like she doesn't want to talk about it, but she said that she didn't tell him about it over the phone or over video chat because she wanted to talk to him about it in person. She tells him that her parents were both on drugs. Y'all, when Hamza was like, drugs, I hollered. Ha. Lord, y'all, I have, that is the funniest shit since on Glee when Naya Rivera did her cocaine, whatever, um, her cocaine motion that she did on that episode. That shit took me smooth out because why was that, he, that why was that how he drugs? <laughs> and I, it wasn't supposed to be funny, but I, I'm childish. I laughed so hard at that, so... She basically tells him her parents were on drugs, rough childhood, and he was like, I'm sad. I'm sad for you, basically. So um, Memphis, they get back to the house, and Memphis was talking to his sister, and because you know his sister speaks English, and his sister was like, yeah, he's three years older than me. She was like, okay, how old are you? She said 23, so which means Hamza's 26. Now, Hamza don't lie to her and said that he was 28. 
So she's upset about that because it's a bigger age gap. So on the one hand, I get why Memphis is upset because if you lying about something as simple as your damn age, you know, what else are you lying about? His mom is like, it's not a big deal. Maybe he just wants to feel older. I said, so you okay with your son lying about his damn age, but you act, you want, you know that he wants to feel older, but you don't think it's okay for him to want to feel older to sleep in your damn house with another woman. Don't do that, Mama, Mama Hamza. I feel like that that is the issue. Now, do I think that Memphis overreacted a little? I think she did overreact a little bit. So she goes, storms off. She's in the bedroom. She want to be by herself. Hamza was like, she's different. What's wrong with her? <laughs> this man is trying to get a green card and get over here for whatever reason. So now Memphis is like, well, you know, we were supposed to go to the embassy and fill out marriage paperwork. I don't know if I want to do that no more because you lying about your age. And I'm like, girl, you would have found out eventually. But okay, I don't think the age difference, I don't think the age is that big of a deal. He said he lied about it because he wanted her to see him as more mature. Okay, but I feel like Memphis, you're also lying because you haven't told him that you stayed at your, um, your ex-husband's house the other night or one night when you were going through something, even though nothing happened. So it's like, Memphis, I feel like you lying about some stuff too, but something about her is just clearly off the rocker. So in her mind, it's like, how can I trust you to bring you around my kids? You shouldn't be trusting him anyways. So she just keeps saying, I don't think I know him as well as I thought. I said, all right, girl. So now she does not believe that he really went to college. So she has his sister go get him, and she demands that he show his diploma. And then she is still like, I get it. But you can tell like his, you can tell that Hamza and his family don't see it as a big deal because they're laughing and smiling about how mad she is. And I think that's what's irritating Memphis even, like, even more. Mike and Jimena. So they finally got some alone time. They're going for, like, a walk. They're looking at, like, um, like a coffee bean stroll or coffee bean area, she called it. And Mike is still feeling a way that, you know, she didn't tell him that she couldn't have kids. So he tells her... Um, you know, he wants to know why. Why didn't you tell me? You know what I mean? Like, he's concerned about their future together because I guess he's been very vocal about wanting kids. So Jimena says she thinks it is a good thing that she didn't keep having kids because she probably would have kept picking the wrong guy and having more and more kids that didn't have a father. I said, I mean, at least you know. At least you know. Because you, you're, you're, you're the same woman that had purposely had a baby, got pregnant by somebody that was in jail during like a conjugal visit. So he asked her, you know, can you untie your tubes? He's her because you, I, I believe you can. It's a very invasive surgery, but you can untie your tubes. And she said, I didn't get mine just tied. I got mine cut and burned off. I said, you for real didn't want no more kids. Um, so he like, he basically is just like, why didn't you tell me this shit? Um, and I'm on I'm on Mike's side with that. Like that's something that you that you should have did. So Jimenez's uh, I'm sorry Jimenez's um, a meal ticket, but my whole thing is like you could have just told. I don't know, girl, but you you can't do this now and then say. But what about my two kids? They're attached to you. Mike has known them kids for three or four days. He is not a father figure to them kids yet. They are not that attached to him just yet. But he is like, well, we can raise them kids together. Okay, Mike. Okay, Mike. I just, I feel like Mike is, I feel the worst for Mike out of everyone else because I feel like Mike really got thrown the okie doke here. So, they um, she promises no more secrets to him and he's like, all right now. So, later, um, he might plans a little trip for them to go to, um, I think it was called Salento. So they go to like a little resort or whatever, and they're sitting in the hot tub, different city. They're in the resort, sitting in the hot tub, and he asked about Harold and Juan's father. He wants them to he wants them to have a conversation and talk about everything that's going on, because he wants them to get to know each other a little more openly. 
So she says that um, they're both in jail. They weren't good men. They're not in their father's lives. She had different things with past relationships. And she even dated a hitman at one point. And he was like a hitman. And she said, yeah. So she said basically she was dating this guy. He was a tattoo artist. They ended up, um, she moved in with him. And she found out after a week of them being together that he was a hitman. She said she was scared. She was fear for her life. She wasn't comfortable. So she broke up with him. A couple of days later, he sent her an audio message saying, um, enjoy your next three days, sis, because I'm going to kill you. So she took that message, gave it to the police. And she said she just hasn't heard from him since. Mike was like, not only am I scared for myself, okay, but, you know, are you safe? And she was like, it's fine, haven't heard from him. And Mike looked stressed. Mike was all red up in the neck. Mike is stressed. Mike needs to take his ass back to, I think he's from Michigan. Go on back home, Mike, where things make sense. And you can find you a nice woman there that will speak English, that will not lie to you about not having kids, and that will appreciate you for the little man that you are. But this, this is, this is not it. This is definitely not it. Finally, Jasmine and Gino. Gino still doesn't quite understand why the toothbrush was a bad idea for a Christmas present. He does not understand that. He's like, she spent all this money on these nice custom gifts for me. And I didn't. And I'm like... Like I said last week, I understand that, you know, you are, are laid off. You spent a lot of money on the trip, but you could have gotten her literally anything else but a toothbrush. So they're down in the gym and he decides to make it up to her by kind of tagging along with her to the gym. Now, he's not working out. He's just going to sit there and apparently get on her nerves while she works out. So she's like lifting weights and he was like, so what are you doing there? Is that a set? Is that what you call a full set? And she said, look, I'm used to being down here by myself. Which basically means, shut up. Basically, that's what that means. So she tells him that she is still mad about the Christmas gift. And she said to make it up to her, she planned a four-day trip for them. Um, and he needs to pay for it. And he said, well, how much is it? She said, $2,500. And I'm thinking that he just told you he didn't want to spend 500 So you're going to add an extra 2000 to it? And she, like, guilt trips into it and was like, you've spent more than that on other women. And if I'm not worth it, then let me know. And I'm like, don't do that. Gino's dumbass agrees to it and said that Jasmine means more to him than the money. And it's just money. So he agrees to pay for the trip. And I'm like, this is stupid. This is stupid. Why didn't you just agree to go back and get the clothes and then, hell, get her a dress in the process? I, I, that, was just, it's just, that was stupid to me. That was honestly stupid to me, um, Gino. So they're in there talking, and she just randomly was like, I want everything in your house. To, I want to take everything in your house and burn it because your stupid ex-wife put up stupid colors on the wall. And it's like, Jasmine, what's tea? What's really good, sweetheart? What's really going on up here? If you want to redecorate the house once you're living there, that's completely understandable. But it's the way that Jasmine is going about this. The way that Jasmine is talking about this. Your stupid ex-wife and her stupid ass. And it's like, and he, he always tells her, like, that's not necessary. Because it's not necessary. It's not necessary. But... They get into it, and she was like, um, who puts red and blue together? And he was like, I, I like the colors. Like, we, we decorated the house together. That sets her off. She starts howling and crying, talking about how he's always trying to make her look stupid. And I'm like, nah, you're making yourself look well, crazy. You're making yourself look crazy, girl. So she storms off, and she's in the hallway crying. Gino said that her emotional instability is concerning he doesn't know where to go from here and i'm like it's not too concerning gino because all it takes is for her to tell you that she wants to leave and you can go ahead and be done and find you another stupid girl on your app and you're back you know kissing her ass gino was fed up he said i'm trying to fix this damn shit 
And I said, Gino, you ain't fooling nobody. This is stupid. I don't think Jasmine is with him for money. I think Jasmine sees Gino as somebody that she can control emotionally to get whatever she wants. She wants to feel like she is just the shit. She wants to feel like, yeah, I, you know, I am his eye candy. I run this. You know, technically, I'm too good for him. Like, that's what she wants to feel like. And it's giving crazy. Like, she's really giving me a thin line between love and hate at this point. Gino sleep with one eye open. So she does all this about how she wants to leave. And he was like, what can we do to fix it? Her response is, you can't talk about your ex ever. You can't defend them ever. They're dead to you. Girl, fine. Shit fine so then she says she wants to go take a nap and then he's just sitting there looking stupid talking about he's seeing red flags there have been red flags since this shit started and you are still entertaining this Gino I don't want to hear nothing about how you're okay with this or you I'm sorry I don't want to hear nothing about how you have concerns when you're not acting on these concerns this was 90 day fiance y'all um Hop in the comment section. Let me know how you guys feel about the episode. If you are not, if you have not already, go ahead subscribe to the channel. Catch y'all in the next one.